Hey, good morning and hey, howdy. Another great episode, but you know what? This morning, I got I got to bring something up, okay? We got to have a moment. So, uh, can Romex be running conduit? Hundreds of comments, mostly questions. So I wanted to mention something to you that's new. All you guys who are like, hey, can I do this? Man, we're doing this channel. I love interacting with you guys, but there's a way to support the channel. Man, buy me a cup of coffee. You'll see the link. You know what to do. So this morning, we're back. We have some questions, and we have some answers. So let's get after it. Really what I mean is click like and subscribe. Here we go. Here is a fantastic life-changing diagram. So again, here we can see this. I'm going to use my, my classic pointer. Here's side view of a house. This upper space is, of course, the attic dry location. For instance, we're running 12-2 Romex. Mm -hmm. We go to the outside, which is now a damp, wet location we've got to do weatherproof J box. Here was the question. Several of you said, hey, if I strip off the sheath and just push these wires through the pipe, is that okay? So to answer your question as gently as possible, no, not at all. Now, can you physically do it? Of course, I've seen it done. Where somebody would come out of here, strip a big long piece, fish the rest of the wire down like this. Here is the problem. If you see these letters, MTW, THWN, THHN, that's usually the stamp you'll see on a roll of individual wires. Okay, we all just kind of refer to it as THHN. These wires here have no such markings. They're not marked at all. So South Wire says, hey, as far as temperature, these are rated for 90 degrees Celsius. That's fantastic. What they're not rated for is any particular location. You have to assume these have to stay in a dry location. So, back, 12-2 through the attic, bam, hit a weatherproof J-box outside, transition to your individual wires. In this case, uh, number 12, black, white, ground, and they need to be, again, we're gonna say THHN, but if you take your super good, like 12-year-old eyes, they can read it, it'll have this on there. I had to take a picture and blow it up a couple of times to confirm splice and there you go so you're seeing geez why does this say the story four things we got to do and here's where the story comes in okay when you're talking about putting romex and conduit we got to talk about the location damp wet protected unprotected location we dive about talk about the fill which is what the story is about are we cramming too big a romex and too small a conduit okay that's a thing Usually we say, traditionally, if it fits, it ships, okay? Which is very cynical because that's not right. Uh, derating, if we end up with more than three conductors, which wouldn't be the ground here, go away. If we had more, this is a 12-3, which it actually is. Right there, there's your red. If we had more, or we were trying to cram two Romexes in a conduit, super bad idea. In any case, we'd have to derate Okay, and that's in uh, table 310, uh, 15. There's a D rating, but that's not the point. And the last thing is protect. So this happens all the time here in Texas. Everything is brick, okay? So you come out with this Romex, dun, 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 through brick, where it's passing through that three and a half inch deep, jaggedy stone or brick, you have to protect it, which means the back of this J box should have a connector of some kind and a sheath. A lot of times it's Carlon, uh, non-metallic flexible something that protects this stuff going through brick or stone because it does get torn up like crazy. Here's the story, okay? A lot of times we're talking about, ah, I don't worry about pulling wire. As long as it fits, it goes. Here's my story, and I've seen this probably half a dozen times. Underground conduit, in this case, the story was going to a pool light. GFI is tripping for this pool light, so we have wires inside of a pipe. Here's what happens all the time. Underground pipe glued and real spiffy is rarely dry. 
It's supposed to be, but it's not, mostly because the air inside is cooler than the air outside. Over time, you get at least condensation. So you're going to end up inevitably with water in this pipe. So the day when whoever, Bobby, Joe, and, and Roy, when they pulled the wires through here, and they had a little hiccup, and they just muscled it and yanked it through there, and they damaged the sheath on their THHN, well, over time, once this outer jacket's damaged, that deteriorates. Now it's submerged. Yes. And if you're doing some older work, a lot of times there's not a GFI. So what happens is you have current between our two wires in water, and it's cooking. And I've pulled wires out where the ends, I pulled solid wire, pulled the next wire, pulled the last wire, comes out 10 feet down into the conduit. There's a wire that's been boiling a wire that's been cooking and actually burn through the copper. Why did that happen? Phil. Phil and being careless. Somebody was uh, trying to stuff too many wires in a small conduit or too many bends and they were yanking it and they weren't careful with the wire. Or maybe my personal pet peeve, the wire was coiled up on the cement or the deck when they, before they pulled and they walked on it. You savages that walk on wire, yeah, that's bad. Don't walk on wire. One of the reasons is because you're going to damage the sheath. You pull it underground, it gets wet, bada bing. You have burning wires underground. It sounds like snakes on the plane, but it's wires, wires on the pipe. And it's boiling water, and it's bad. Just for some of you that like simple, it's bad. Don't overfill the pipe. Protect the wires. Use the wires that have the correct uh, rating for their environment. That's the answer to the question. If you don't want to do it, that's up to you. But I'm telling you the right answer. Do it the way it's supposed to be done. Click like, subscribe, say that again. I'm thirsty. Buy me a gosh darn cup of coffee, and I'll see you on the next one.